to the Cracking Gang YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code problem 623, add one row to tree. Given the root of a binary tree and two integers val and depth, add a row of nodes with the value val and the depth depth. Note that the root de uh, node is at depth one. The adding rule here is given the integer depth for each not null node cur at the depth depth minus one, create two tree nodes with the value val as cur's left subtree root and right subtree root. Cur's original left subtree should be the left subtree of the new left subtree root. Cur's original right subtree should be the right subtree of the new right subtree root. And if depth equals one, that means that there is no depth minus one at all, then create a tree node with the value val as the new root of the original whole tree and the original tree is now the new root's left subtree. Okay, that was an absolute mouthful. Uh, let's look at an example and kind of see what they actually want us to do here. It's really not that complex once you see the picture. So let's kind of wipe all this away and look at that diagram. Let's look at two very basic examples. So we're given this tree here on the left and we're told to insert the value one uh, at depth two. And let me just change my pen color so you guys can actually see. Let's use green. Okay, cool. Uh, at depth two, right? So we know it told us that the root level is depth one. So that means depth two must be this level here. So that means that we wanna insert value one here. So as you can see, we would insert ones here in the place of the two and the, what was this before, uh, two and six. And then the left subtree of the new inserted one would be the rest of this tree, so two, three, one. And then the right subtree of the um, value here is just continuing on, um, you know, what we had, so six and five, right? And the same thing here, we're given this tree four, three, one, or four, two, three, one. <clears throat> we wanna insert it at depth three. So depth three, so this is one, two, three. So we wanna put it on this level. So the two should get two nodes, one and one, because that's the value we wanna insert. And then we just need to put back the tree. So uh, three was the left subtree of two. So now it's the left subtree of this one and one was the right subtree of two, and now it's the um, right subtree of this new inserted node. That's essentially what we wanna do. It's quite simple. What we're gonna do is we're going to BFS here. You can do it with DFS, but I just prefer to do these with BFS because it's simpler. We're gonna BFS um, until we find the level uh, that we wanna insert minus one. The reason we wanna do minus one is because we need all the nodes at that parent level. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna break the BFS once we hit level uh, minus one. And we're gonna get all of the nodes that um, need to get moved down. And what we're gonna do is, uh, sorry, for each of the parent nodes on that level, we're going to get its children, but then change the structure. So if the parent has a left and a right tree, then what we wanna do is we wanna insert new nodes here. So now it should be like parent, it's gonna have a left node with the value of val, and then val's left will now be the old left. So we're basically just gonna shift everything down a level, um, and we're gonna do that for both the left and the right. So whenever we get a parent that's on the level that we want to actually insert on, or one level before, we're gonna get whatever the current left is. We're going to then set parent.left equal to a new node with our value, and then we're gonna set the left of that new node to be whatever the old left was. So we're essentially inserting this row of values. So that's basically the algorithm that we wanna go with here. Really simple to code up. It's just your basic um, you know, tree traversal. There is that little stipulation that you need to insert the nodes, but nothing really haven't done before. So what I wanna do now is just go to the code editor. We'll walk through this line by line. It's really simple pretty much a standard BFS, like I said, and it really shouldn't be too hard to do. So I will see you in the code editor momentarily. We are back in the code editor and we're gonna type this up. Uh, you'll notice that I've switched from the usual light theme to the dark theme because people have requested it and I guess the light theme attracts bugs. Ha ha, if you get the joke. Okay, so let's write the code. Remember that we need to handle the special case where depth is actually given to us as one, in which case we need to create a new root here and then set the left subtree of that new root to be whatever the old uh, tree was. So let's handle that now. We're gonna say if depth uh, oops, equals to one, uh, we're just gonna return a new tree node with the value val and the left subtree is gonna be root and the right subtree is gonna be none. So that handles that case. 
Now what we want to do is actually define our current level. So remember that the, the depth actually starts at one, not zero. So let's define the current depth to be one. And we need a queued uh, structure here. So we're going to say collections.deck and we're going to populate it with the root. Now remember that we're going to BFS until we get to depth minus one, in which case we're going to break from the BFS and then we just need to process all of the elements that are on that level uh, cur depth, right? So we're going to say while Q, while we have something to process, we're going to say if the current depth equals to depth minus one, and remember we're doing depth minus one because we actually want to get the parent level of the level that we want to insert, right? Because we need to set that new row of vowels at the depth and depth minus one is where we'll actually have the parent and we can access the children that we need to shift down. So if the current depth equals depth minus one, then we just want to break out of our BFS. Otherwise, we're just going to do a standard breadth first search where we just go um, level by level, node by node, and we're going to take the left and the right out of each um, node uh, that we pop from our queue, and we're just going to populate the queue and keep going. So we're going to say for blank, so we need to process the level, for blank in range, uh, len queue, <coughs> this will just process the current level. We're going to say that the current node is going to be q.popleft. And we're going to say if there's a left node, so if cur node.left, we're going to say q.append that left node, right? So cur node.left. And we're going to do the same thing for the right node. So if cur node.right, we're going to say q.append cur node.right. Okay. Last thing we need to do is before we basically uh, finish our level traversal here, we just want to increment our cur depth by one and um, then we can move on to the next level. Okay, so when we break out of our loop here, we now just need to process everything that's actually inside the queue. So we're gonna say for node in queue, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, remember that if the left of our current node exists, then we need to basically set the value, um, you know, the new left as whatever value is, and then the left needs to now get set of the new node we just created needs to be set to that old one. So we're going to say the current left is going to be node.left. We're going to create the new left, right? So we're going to create the new left. So we're going to set our current nodes left to be a new tree node with value val and the left tree, uh, sorry, um, let's see. Um, yeah, yeah, with, and then we're just going to set nothing here. Um, and then we're actually just going to actually we can update the the left directly. We don't need to do no dot left dot left. Uh, we'll just set it to whatever the current left is, right? So we've taken the old left node uh, and now we've created this new left node to basically push that old level down one and then we've set the left of that node um, essentially to you know whatever the old left was and we need to do the same thing for the right tree. So we're gonna say the current right oops hit my caps lock there. Uh, we're going to say the current right is going to be the node, the current nodes right. And uh, we're going to say the new right now is going to be a new tree node with the value val. It's not going to have a left tree. And it is going to have a value of what it's going to have a value of the current right. So that is basically all we need to do. Uh, the last thing we need to do is just return the tree. So we're going to say, or if I can just spell return root, and we are good to go. So I just want to run this quickly and make sure I didn't make any stupid syntax mistakes and it looks like we are all right and we have been accepted. So let's think about our time and space complexity here. Like I said, this is a pretty standard BFS question. So all we have to do in the worst case, we'll have to traverse the entire tree to basically get to the last level, which is where we'll need to insert it. So in that case, it's going to be a big O of N. Um, in our time because we'll have to get to the very last uh, level of the tree in the case that the depth they want is actually to insert it at the very last level. Space complexity wise, we have a Q here, which again, if we have to go all the way down to the very last level, it's going to require us processing, you know, potentially big O of N elements. So space is also going to be big O of N pretty standard for your, um, BFS questions that your time is big O of N and your space is big O of N, uh, where N obviously is the number of nodes in the tree. So that is how you solve this problem. Add one row to tree. 
pretty straightforward, nothing we really haven't seen before. This pattern of you know BFSing through a binary tree is super common. You'll see this all the time. Knowing how to do it uh, by heart is definitely something you want to have memorized. And we just applied a little bit extra to actually set the uh, new level, but oh well, it's a new question. They're not all going to be the same. So that's how you solve this problem. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you uh, understand the solution. If you enjoyed the video, why not give it a like and a comment? It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this to help you prepare for FANG interviews, why don't you drop a su subscription to the channel? Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for making it to the end, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.